Hello and welcome to episode 30 of EcoFarm. This is an all change, all change, all change episode. So I've been getting a little bit bored with trying to keep up with the pigs and it kind of worked out quite well because I got a call from the mayor saying that there's a new farmer in town completely on the other side of town who um, is specializing in pigs as well so I thought well that's a, a really really good time for me to get out of the pigs so I'm busy doing a deal with that farmer to sell everything up to him so we're starting with all the extra straw that I've got so I'm selling it onto the open market and he's just buying it from there and then we will sell all our pigs and all our equipment off to him as well and that's how we're going to start this episode so we'll be seeing how much we can realize from the pigs won't be huge sums because we've um, we've sold off a lot of pigs already and there's a big new uh, I've got a you'll see as we go along um, I've got a fantastic new opportunity to go in a completely different direction um, not generally speaking with a farm we're still going to have to um, farm our arable lands but uh, in terms of what product we are going to be producing so stay tuned for that so we get we just busy selling all our pigs off and loading them up and getting them over to the to the other farmer I've had a look at his 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 place as such he's not a eco farm but he is a um, Oh, he, he, he does things right, let's just put it that way. Yeah, so I'm quite happy for them to go over there. Right, so that's that pretty much done. The only thing we didn't get any money for was the fencing, and that was probably the most expensive part of uh, this whole um, modular system that we put up. But I'm just going to even off this land to be able to put in our new venture don't know what it's going to be doing we're going to have to buy in product to stock it to start with as we convert our fields to um, to product to sort it out so the first thing I'm putting in is I'm putting in the vegan milk factory and I'm also putting in a soya drinks factory the vegan milk factory will take a little while to get going because we have to produce oils for it, sunflower oil. And so we're putting in a small a small oil producing press, if you want to call it that. The good thing, of course, is that this also can press uh, some of our fruits, our apples. So we should be producing some apple juice, a bit of a dual role there. And there we go, that's our new little venture. Vegan and, well, basically vegan foods to supply down to the town. All in that space that we had the pigs in. So we haven't had to go to the bank at this point to get any extra financing. We managed to finance that through basically the sales of the of the the pigs and the pig equipment and also um, from our productions that we had already sold off to the markets earlier on in the day so there we go there's the fruit press so we can do raisins in there as well so apple juice we can, can get out um, grape juice if we've got anything of those and then we've got the soya drink factory which is a very basic factory straightforward so with the vegan milk factory we need to um, we're going to need to buy in sugar I don't think we in the right sort of area to plant sugar so we'll buy in sugar but we will produce all our own oils and uh, we'll be able to produce a lot of the main ingredients and 
yeah, so looking forward to that. What we will do is we'll get the soya factory and the soya milk operation going with some bought in product for now. Uh, we'll also buy in some sunflower to get the, the milk production going. Then once we've got uh, sunflower oil, we'll buy in um, the oats as such. We just need to get the whole thing going and tested um, so that once we get all our fields converted, we can, we can get going on that. So we've got some fields that need to be planted. We've got a lot of fields with barley in them that will go to servicing our... Um, our chickens and also um, to keep the the bread mill going or the flour mill going and the bread production going and the noodles going um, so that hasn't changed uh, we might uh, be able to reduce the number of fields that we've got covered in that um, after this uh, next season yeah so pretty happy with that pretty happy with that right so let's get the we won't get the the place fully beautified yet what we will do is because we'll be traveling in and out of this area quite a bit um, and the um, ground is still fairly soft from the um, from having pigs on it for so long we will just uh, put some cobblestone down and uh, that'll be, we'll eventually put a nice little fence up at the top and some trees and um, as we go along we'll just make it look a little bit more like it hasn't just materialized in the middle of somewhere. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so down in the field down here, the town where we have our Pick as your own. Uh, pick as you. Well, pick your own. Pick as you go. Pick your own um, orchards. We're going to make one big, huge field, which is going to be our soya field. Um, the fields that we've harvested. So we've got one right next to us here that had the sunflower in, um, and the. Where were the other fields? Oh, the fields that we had the corn in. We will convert to oats at the moment, or to start with. I must just check. I don't know. Do, do, I'm, I'm just, I just need to check to see whether. Yes, yeah, I think our um, vegan milk just uses oats but I'll check that up as we go along um, so we may well we will have to convert some of the fields that we've got to barley at the moment to um, to help out with the productions here but that'll be a, a full year cycle to be able to get this up and um, pretty much self-sufficient the only thing that I don't envisage Doing, and we might give it we might give it a crack actually we, you know we might have to give it a crack but the problem is the investment in a, a sugar mill is quite big um, just for the one production so we'll have a look we'll see what sort of pricing we can get sugar at a, um, as we go along yeah so it's looking pretty neat tidy quite happy with that Right, so let's go and get some product into that. We'd also, both operations need water as well. I did say I wasn't going to beautify the place, but I think we need to get some light in. And of course, we mustn't forget, we need to, um, we need to supply power. Um, so either so solar panels or some um, wind generators. Let's just get the lights in quickly. It's the lights that reminded me about it because they're going to take electricity, of course. 
and it's going to, I mean, these are big factories, so we're going to need a fair amount of power. I also just, I have to balance the the kind of need for power um, with the with the generators that I put on because they do generate income so I don't want to create a situation where we're just putting up um, generators at such willy-nilly and we're generating a whole lot of money that would perhaps not um, warrant the power that would be used by so if you think I've got too much power or too little power in terms of the especially in this operation you'll see in a little while exactly how much I'm going to be well what I'm going to be doing in terms of I have some thought on it let's have a look and see solar panels we can put them up but they'd have to go flat um, this yeah I think most probably wind generators are going to be better I'm going to put up on three on each of the big factories and then I'm going to put one up on the on the um, oil press so that's simply because we're doing it I'll put another one up if we do any fruit production on the um, on the press factory so the the oil factory and fruit press factory so if we start doing fruit there I'll put another one up so I think each of those generate about 500 um, euros a month so I think that's kind of fair for the size of the production and the type of production that we're going to be doing I'm quite happy with that um, let me know in the comments if you think I need to put up more or not right so let's head on back to the the yard and go and pick up some inputs so I think we'll start with some soya to put into the soya drinks factory that one will get up and going straight away I think it produces at a pretty a pretty speedy rate but we'll um, we'll do this as a, a two part two parter basically we'll get everything up and running in this episode and then we'll um, do another episode with uh, once we've gone into the next month we are in the winter months so I thought that's why it was a good idea to do it now so that we um, yeah, just have something to do in the winter months <laughs> before we, we go into those hectic months of harvesting and that type of thing so going forward also in the series um, we'll be showing a lot less of the harvesting I'll be doing a, a lot of that off camera um, just because we've seen so much of it um, and I think that was um, slowing down the whole operation it was just we just seem to be doing the same thing over and over again so um, we may go to um, sort of two two-part episodes um, as we change things and do two th things differently so it might be a week before we the next well it'll be fairly quick before the next e episode comes out but then there might be a week or so as I do all the other bits and pieces off camera and um, then um, fill you in on what's happening on the eco farm it happens a lot in these series where you get to a stage where you're just doing thing, the same things over and over again so you've got to just try and freshen it up and this is an attempt to freshen this up we'll see how it goes right so let's get this off loaded now there's a little little thing here <laughs> that uh, 
Um, I didn't, well, I didn't take notice of. Is I just presumed that this is where you would offload your inputs into the um, into the oil press. I mean, it kind of looks like that's where you would input put the input in. But I spent a bit of time just checking, trying to find a trigger. Couldn't find a trigger. I know you're all shouting, switch the trigger markers on. I'll get there, I'll get there, but I do like to try and work it out sometimes as well. <laughs> so I thought, well, perhaps let's go and activate it and uh, see if the markers come up then. And I thought, well, so I didn't have to buy it because we, you know, we bought it, we built it ourselves, so <laughs> we didn't have to go and buy the, the production. We should be still nothing. I thought, well, maybe we have to go a little bit further back. Let's try that. Ah, can you hear the shots? Show the triggers, show the triggers. <laughs> Didn't work, so I gave up. When I say I gave up, I decided it's probably best to put the, the triggers on. <laughs> <laughs> and there you can just see it hiding at the back so not the most intuitive place for offloading your inputs compared to where it kind of looks like they should go but hey not a major problem so there we go we got there in the end <laughs> Uh, yeah. Get this all floated, and then we'll nip back and we'll go and get some soya beans, buy in some soya beans. It is costing a bit. We did get a bit of uh, extra income for the for the the feed that we had already in the pigs which the new guy took with as well I think he gave me about 15 grand for all the feed that was in there uh, so I think we lost a bit of money on that but because um, we had a lot of food in there we had a lot of food that we produced uh, um, we just put the sunflowers in from the two crops that we harvested the two fields of sunflower that we harvested so there was a lot of a lot of work gone into that, but yeah, the pigs are flown, as I say. Right, let's get this activated. So we need water there, and just around the corner there is the input. So these big factories are going to need lots of water, so I'm going to pipe in some water from the windmill and we'll put some taps up um, next to the buildings here we'll start with this one we'll put the other one up when we get that one going you've seen this little trick of mine over and over again so you kind of know what i'm up to now let's, let's sort it out Yeah, so I think it'll be, um, I'd, I'm hoping to get us into full production before, before we, um, well, fairly quickly in the next couple of months, basically. Um, so yeah, oat milk, soy milk, so we need soy, uh, yeah, so we, we need a big soy field, we need some big oat fields to keep the two two factories going. That's not a problem. The other thing that I can ask you guys is if you if you know of any other sort of eco mods, particularly vehicle mods, um, yeah I feel we've only got the 
Hurdimans there to have any power to really operate in this type of environment. Um, this non um, carbon fuel environment. They've been doing very, very well, but um, we we cannot complain with that. Well, seeing as we don't need a lot of straw anymore, I just caught my eye on the um, on the forage harvester which we have leased. I must get that back to the to the shop. Right, so that's another. Uh, so that's fairly expensive, fourteen thousand. So when it's probably going to at best break even on our productions for the first year, but we'll be able to snag any any little problems that we have. Alright, so we'll just pick up the water trailer. We won't fill it up here because the Hurleyman might struggle with this new this new trailer that we've got. Um, it's 22 odd tons, isn't it? 24 odd tons. If we put another 10 tons of water on it at the back of that then uh, yeah I think it might struggle but we'll just pull it along empty. As you saw we did pipe in some, put in some water pipes from here up to the um, up to the soya, soya drinks factory. Not quite sure how soya drinks will taste. Uh, you know, notice we're not putting any sort of sweetener or any additive into it. You know, additive flavouring, should I say? So probably for the seriously health conscious. <laughs> oh dear! At least with the with the milk factory, we seem to be sweetening sweetening up the the plant-based milk. As you can see, we've got a bit of a weed problem in some of our fields. Some of our weeding failed. And that's part of uh, eco farming. Sometimes it's going to fail. Well, I'm, I'm writing it into the storyline. I think I just forgot to weed it. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got quite a few fields actually. Uh, must be at least two fields of barley that I can think of. Or fan the one big field um, plus the one we, we, we just drove past near the mushroom um, near the mushroom um, what are they called greenhouses and I just offload the water and we go and put the soya into the factory yeah architect was not that imaginative um, pretty much designed both the buildings the same but that was for cost reasons because we could use we could buy the the materials um, we could just double up in the materials and get better prices so kind of just kept the costs down yeah so where is the marker for this one now well at the marker the uh, trigger point. I'm right over the trigger point now, it's not showing. Um, am I on the right? Yeah, well, I'm on the trailer. It's one of my little things that I go wrong with sometimes. Sometimes I'm... There, we, there it is. It's just a little bit leaning towards the front of the actual grate. So not a serious problem. It's like in a new building, we need to get used to it and that's what with this little snagging process um, for the next couple of months is all about finding out where things learning how the operation runs so that once we start putting our own product into there we are as, as efficient as we can be is that done we're just offload that we're going to load up water now it's going to be a long operation because this thing's going to take a lot of water so we'll do our own little water filling trick 
won't show you the whole lot, we'll show you the start and the end. It does take a little while to get these things filled up with water. I know there is a mod, well, I don't know whether it's on 22, I know I used to use it in 19, um, where you could create this pipe situation for water to come in and had these blue pipes with valves on them that seem to work quite well. I suppose I should look for it, but... Uh, There we go. We're doing our a fill and deliver as opposed to stand and deliver. Fill and deliver method of putting water into this into our factories. It doesn't take that long really, but um yeah. It doesn't look like a lot is happening while you're doing it, <laughs> uh, unless you, you know, take notice of the of the of the, um, the little bar in the bottom right-hand corner, which shows the trailer filling and emptying, filling and emptying. So we should just about be done. It would be quite neat if you could just see how how far you're away from actually filling up the actual production unit as you go along. Sometimes you just keep going until it stops, stops taking water. I suppose that's good enough really. There we go. Is it? No. Yeah, yeah, it stopped taking water. So we've got a full tank. We'll we'll drop this off into the into the soy soy milk factory or the vegan milk factory. And there we go. This has already produced a pallet of goods, and that's uh, seven hundred liters in there. Ah, so that's really really quick. I mean, that was in the time that we basically filled the water up. Yeah, so that's probably going to need to be cleared twice a day, the same as the the mushroom and flowers, just to keep it as productive as possible. Because it's producing so quickly, it's probably not going to be extremely high value. But uh, I think it'll be it'll be profitable just load everything up now and uh, yeah I guess that's pretty much where we're going to end this episode so that's those well the one factory up and running the two two out of the three factories up and running in the next month we'll do the deliveries from the soya drinks factory we'll get the the vegan milk factory going and we'll realize our first bit of money from the soya drinks yeah we've got sunflowers in there that is producing it's a fairly slow producer but then again I think that the um, the vegan milk factory will use the data the recipes would be not calling for a huge amount. Yep, so we've got, yeah, it pretty much just needs one, one um, oil per production cycle. So yeah, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. We may have to put another factory in. Um, I didn't really want to put another huge big factory in there because I thought it would just kind of block out the view of the other factories. This was, this was the footprint of this was nice and small, and I suppose we could we could put more in if we need. We'll see how 
also depends on how much we can supply. Right, well that's where we're going to end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio!